everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Joan here and today's video is going to be about my camera collection, all film cameras. And to be honest, it's been a while that I looked at my inventory of what I have. And so we'll literally go through it together and I'll share with you side stories about how I've obtained them or how I don't use much of them and which ones are my favorites and which ones that I dislike and all of the above. So stay tuned and keep watching. The first one I have here is a Canon AL1. This is my dad's camera. This is the camera that my dad handed down to me when I first started my darkroom class in college. I didn't have or own a film camera and I was surprised because I didn't even know he owned this one and this is probably the camera I'll never sell and would hand down or pass down to younger generations and this camera takes amazing photos it's just unfortunate that I have a video on my channel if you haven't watched how to replace the battery door but even still it's still falling apart sometimes so it has a calf tape currently and it has a 28 millimeter lens on it and literally I started off with this camera when I started my whole film photography journey it's a 35 millimeter and sadly I wish I could be shooting with this more but like I said the battery is an issue but overall I miss shooting with this camera so much the next camera that I'm going to share with you is going to be very familiar if you watch my previous videos. It's the only medium format film camera that I have that shoots 120 film and it's the Yashica Matte 124G. Voila! <laughs> and the magnifying lens pops up like this. It has a parallax so when you look down it's actually the opposite of what you see and that could be a pain for some people but I got used to it. I actually bought this camera years ago from Brooklyn Film Camera uh, at their old location and literally I remember how much I really wanted to find this camera. I remember when I was at the P Pasadena uh, like camera flea market or whatever I saw this camera but then I couldn't afford it at the time and then when I finally saved up I actually was able to get it before my trip to the Philippines around like 2017 and got it at Brooklyn Film Camera. So, after, I can't let go of this camera. Um, it's been a thought, but it's, it's always like back and forth. Um, just because I have so many memories with this, like this camera has literally been everywhere from literally LA to Dubai to Korea, Hong Kong, all of my travel diary videos. This camera has been always with me. It's always been an icebreaker because people always ask what kind of camera is this? And I learned so much also with how to use this camera with strobe lighting and doing studio work and I, I just love the results with this camera so I've always had a difficulty trying to find the lens that can attach to it that you, that you can see at, on Matt Day's video on this camera I went to Tokyo I couldn't find it but if anyone has any leads I'm still searching for it but yeah um, this is the camera that many people are familiar with whenever they see my videos, when they meet me in person, they always bring up this camera. And I enjoy it to the point that I still have it for many years and that's pretty much it. I don't know why I haven't upgraded to another medium format camera. I've just always stick to this and I was always content. The next camera that I have is one that I've used a few times, not so many times, just because it has a unique style. It's the Nishika N8000. I actually bought this off of Andre Dominguez, if you know him. He, I don't know, still works at Cinestill? Question mark? Um, but this was like way back when he was still in college, which is crazy to believe. I really wanted to try out this camera because this does the 3D effect that people try to emulate on Photoshop or some app but this literally does it manually old school um, and I had this camera for the longest time and then it wasn't until I went 
to the b and creator event for Ben that I tried this out and yeah, the photos turned out well. Um, this also has like a battery door issue. That's why there's a gaff tape. That's my solution all the time when the battery door falls apart. Um, but that doesn't mean the camera doesn't work anymore. Um, it's a 35 millimeter camera and yeah, I enjoy using it, but it's not a camera that I just feel like I'll always use. So definitely this is probably going to go on sale eventually on my ebay uh I, I don't see much use of it it's like a fun camera to use at events and things like that but like for a long period of time uh yeah i haven't really used this camera but it is a fun camera to use so the next camera i have here is the minolta htsi plus and this is another 35 millimeter it's just like an easy automatic camera that also has manual settings and it has a 28 to 80 millimeter lens on it. I actually got this a gift. My neighbor literally said that he bought this camera in Aruba, I believe, or just the idea that he was going on a trip to Aruba. I kid you not. And then literally said that he found this in his basement or in his house somewhere and thought of me and then decided that he hasn't used it in a while, so maybe I would find more use with it, and so he gave it to me. Uh, so this is the camera. I shot and used this camera when I was doing caveman, built my skateboard for a few photos. But to be honest, any friend of mine or a person that has approached me and asked me uh, if they could borrow a camera for their darkroom class or just anything in general or they just want to learn about film photography, I usually let people borrow this camera uh, just because it's just an easy beginner film camera friendly um, so yeah that's pretty much it. It, it it's just an easy camera to use and it just does the job if you just want to go literally on a trip and just bring something that will take nice photos so this is that camera the next camera that i'm going to share with you is my first rangefinder which is a Canon Net QL17. I remember when I really, really wanted this camera and I couldn't believe that I found it for $50 at a store. It was like in the glass window. And I was like, if it's not a QL17, because there's other models, I was like, I'm not gonna buy it. But the fact that it was exactly the camera model that I wanted, I got it and I wanted it to practice zone focusing. Never had a rangefinder camera before. I couldn't afford a Leica. So I ended up getting this and Literally, this is like so like so lightweight, and for me, this was like my literally go-to camera instead of bringing a point and shoot. I'd bring this along. I have accessories like filters that will help like with the contrast and stuff. Like if you if I shoot black and white, especially. Um, and unfortunately, I don't use this camera as much as I used to. But literally, I feel like it's such a nice, cool has a nice, cool look to it. But also, it takes great photos and if you can't afford a Leica, this is the way to go. And yeah, it definitely costs much more than $50 now, but at the time I just couldn't believe that I found this camera that I really wanted at the time. So if you're looking into a rangefinder, this might be also on sale on my eBay uh, account, so keep a lookout. The next camera I have is another camera that I own that is an icebreaker every time I go to an event. I sometimes bring it to show it off because when you see it, people automatically know what camera it is. No, it's not a Leica. It is my Canon EOS 1V. Yes, it looks like a DSLR, like a digital SLR, um, but it's not. It shoots film. Uh, this is the back, if you don't know. I actually bought this camera, um, well, let's say, I actually wanted this camera because Wesley, if you follow him on Instagram, he had this camera before. I know, I think he sold it now. If you're watching, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I asked him if he, you know, he, he posted photos on his story way back when, and I said, oh, what camera did you use to take those? And he said it was this camera body. So I was interested and then now I have it. Um, and I like that uh, it uses literally my digital Canon lenses um, and EF. And then so it was just convenient because I could use my Canon 
you know, 6D and then I could also use this um, camera and just interchange with the lenses, it's the same thing. And I always said that to myself, like, if only I could find a film camera where I could use my Canon lenses and it'd just be so convenient. The only issue why it makes it not convenient is the fact that it's just camera so heavy and it's so bulky and I was like I don't like carrying this camera it's only good if I really want to take really really nice photos uh, like for example if I was gonna do a photo shoot um, like portraits or something like that I would bring this out um, but if not if I'm just like going on vacation like I most likely won't bring this camera because it's just not practical to put this in my bag and it's so heavy and it's just gonna break my shoulder uh, so yeah but this ca literally camera body love the Canon EOS 1V um, and I wouldn't trade it in the world uh, but it's just so heavy <laughs> that's just the downfall for me the next camera I'm going to share with you is a camera that I wish I used more to be honest and Raphael if you're watching I'm sorry I know you'll probably notice I'm haven't used this camera probably since the last time I went out to LA to visit you and he's the one who traded cameras with me and I've always wanted a speed graphic and this one in particular too because I was getting into the whole like Lomo graph lock and like 4x5 and that was a whole time and so anyways we traded cameras and I now own this I wish I was using it more but Hopefully this year, this is my goal, like really, really, really to use this camera more. Um, and what, when the weather is better, I can take portraits of people like outside and things like that. But also this is a camera that's so heavy to just like carry around, even though it's portable enough where like you could just like close it and like pack it and it's just like this, you know, but like it's still so <laughs> and if anyone knows me, I just prefer cameras that are just lightweight, easy, and portable, and I could just be on the go. But this camera is just like so, so heavy. But I was so inspired, to be honest. Ooh. <laughs> I was so inspired, to be honest, when if you watch The Master and you see Joaquin Phoenix as a photographer and he has like that famous still where he's you know using this camera i've always then wanted to have a camera like this it just looks aesthetically pleasing i'll admit uh and it's so cool to use um if you know how to use it uh but yeah i just wish i used it more and that's literally probably my most likely 2023 goal take more portraits with this i i hope that i could use this camera more with the lomo graph lock and the fact that film is getting more expensive but i could use the Fuji film insects film at least that might help a bit with the cost and I can still use this camera and just not spend so much money but yeah I really really want to use this camera more so Raphael uh, hold that to me that I will use this more and anyone who's watching next camera here I have is the wide Lux. this was on a video in my channel it's the F6B. I got gifted this camera for graduation from one of my professors and I honestly didn't know what this camera was so I never use it hands down. I only know about the X-Pan as a panoramic camera, did not know. I had a feeling this was a panoramic camera but I just didn't know that like for example Jeff Bridges it like swears by this camera like I just had it on my shelf and only recently till I started meeting other YouTube photographers and things like that and, and going to meetups and seeing people using this I was like wow other people have this camera I just thought this was like maybe some third-party camera but it's not and uh, yeah so I have this um, it's for me honestly not a camera that I feel like I'm gonna hold on to for long um, just because I really do want the X-Pan um, as my panoramic camera which I don't own one uh, this does the job but like it's just not my favorite camera but um, I, I, I feel bad because my professor gave it to me as a gift but at the same time I think you would understand if like I end up selling it and investing on an X-Pan and it'll be a camera that I'll actually use more um, this camera is just like really simple to use but I don't know there's just something about it why I just not crazy about it but just wanted to give you my honest review 
and let you know that I own one. A lot of my friends were shocked once I told them I did. They were just like, what? When did you own a Wide Lux? Like, when did you get this? And I was like, I got it as a gift, but I hid it on my shelf because I just didn't think it was worth anything. Uh, but yeah, so this is my Wide Lux camera. So the next camera that I have is the Polaroid Land camera. You might see this a lot at thrift stores. To be honest, I haven't used this camera in particular. I've used other models, um, but this one that I bought, I've just had to get one just because in case forever, whatever reason I might be able to use it, but haven't used it. Uh, but yeah, it uses peel apart uh, Polaroid film. That's super expensive because non-existent anymore. And uh, yeah, this is it. This could just probably be sitting on my shelf forever. But yeah, if you're able to use it and it works, it takes cool Polaroid photos. Um, but just unfortunately, it's just so, so expensive to use film for this. Uh, so it's just been sitting there. So the next camera that I want to share is my Super 8 camera. You've probably seen this in previous videos as well. It's a Canon Zoom 518. I got this from an estate sale from literally in Jersey out of all places, like where I'm from. And it was convenient because that meant that delivery was fast and I needed it for a protest walk during the BLM movement uh, during the pandemic. So this is why every time I think about when I got this camera, it was for a purpose to document uh, life and world events and to capture the times. And so I'll never forget that this is the camera that I got uh, during COVID. So there you go. Next camera that I own that a lot of people always connect me with with my channel is my Bolex H16. I'm not gonna go through all the details because there's videos on my channel revolving around it, but this is literally my stimulus baby. Uh, got it during COVID as well. Uh, it also has a handle, but it's not attached currently. And um, I haven't shot with this for a while. I know people know how much I used it in the past, but lately it's just been sitting there. I've just been waiting for the right opportunity to use it again, but this camera is literally never gonna go anywhere. I will definitely keep this forever uh, until I die. <laughs> so yeah. I almost forgot one other camera that I own that you might be familiar with in other videos, but this is my only point and shoot camera. and. It has not failed me ever. I actually thought when I first bought it, I thought it was just like a whatever camera. I actually got it, I think for $3 and I didn't really think much of it at the time, but I just knew that since I travel a lot, it would be convenient to have a waterproof point and shoot camera and something lightweight, portable to just bring around. So I have here the Canon SureShot WP-1. Uh, many times I've thought about if I should sell this or not just because I don't know I just feel like I always wanted like another point-and-shoot camera like an Olympus or something like that uh, just because they're better but for me and so with this camera it takes really great photos though like it actually like always proves me wrong when I bring it and take photos with it especially if I'm in the beach or in the pool anything with water it just takes good photos uh, and everyone always asks about it because it just looks really interesting and has such a tight covering. If you drop it, it's like not the end of the world and it has like this cool colorway. So yeah, if ever you're looking for an all around point and shoot film camera, this camera is a good recommendation. And yeah, I actually shot with this pretty much the whole time I was on set for reality. And uh, yeah, so can't go wrong, <laughs> literally. Um, and yeah, this is it. So another camera that I have that I almost forgot because it was in my car is my Polaroid One Step Plus. This is the Polaroid camera that I prefer to use. I used to own the traditional 
ones way back when uh, and I would buy them at thrift stores and things like that but then they would fall apart, they would stop working and it's much more expensive to repair an old school Polaroid camera so then I got this and I actually enjoy using this a lot it has a lot of features such as like it has a Bluetooth remote through your phone it has self timer, you could do double exposures you could um, literally it'll tell you if you're when you're taking a picture if you're taking a photo like with one person or like a group photo or like self-portrait like if you're in focus so I really appreciate that there's just more things that are involved with the app and it actually works really well connecting through Bluetooth so I have no complaints using this camera I've heard before that some people had issues with it but so far for me it works really well and then recently uh, the reason why I was in my car because uh, I would take Polaroids every time I would go on a date and it was a good way to have a souvenir at the end of the day and you could always take photos on a phone I believe but then like it's just something different when you get to take a Polaroid and it's just like a cool experience sometimes people would catch us doing this and then they would ask either if they could help take a photo but because we have the self timer feature and the remote on the phone um, we don't I don't really have to ever ask someone to help like take the photo for us um, and then also it's just it's just something different with just having a physical copy right away and telling the person that you're on a date with that to not shake the Polaroid because that will actually ruin it uh, and you should just face it down and wait for it to expose properly and it just becomes a whole conversation so I enjoyed doing that taking Polaroids uh, and just capturing the memory through that way than just documenting it on my phone so there you go this is the Polaroid camera that I have and lastly I have of course my Leica M6 here as my recent film camera that is now in my collection and uh, yeah I have not used it to its full capacity but I've enjoyed taking photos with this it made me fall in love with 35mm again and I don't have to talk so much about it because I have videos on my channel now uh, explaining the whole backstory of how I got it and photos I took with it but just wanted to say that yeah it's in my collection so that's pretty much it for my collection and I am don't know how I feel I feel bittersweet exposing my collection I feel that uh, I'm glad that I don't have much more and I don't like to hoard cameras but I also do think about when I see film cameras out and about if I could resell them that's the truth and the ones that I really do enjoy using and I know I could use for future projects I definitely do keep and I like the idea of giving a camera or gifting it to someone that I feel that can benefit from using it or having it and despite the fact that film is either discontinuing or getting more expensive I still continue wanting to shoot film and until I just can't anymore uh, but the cameras that I do invest in I definitely don't plan on selling them but if you are interested in other cameras that I have uh, and you might be want to buy them you can leave a comment down below I'll get back to you and that's pretty much it for now um, I feel like when you're like at an AA meeting and you're like talking about your addiction um, buying cameras was an addiction at one point but I think I'm better at it I think my collection is smaller than what it used to be and I don't have an issue technically to just like give it away um, but still uh, I do have an attachment to them uh, so thank you again for watching stay tuned till the next video sayonara it's the end of the video so don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't it will help me in the long run okay bye